Hello and good evening, everyone. I am Mr. Chaos the Cutting Wolf. And MLP Season 7, Episode 6 and 7 are out already? Like, what's with this whole episodes airing early on Treehouse thing? I really don't get it. I mean, it, it's, it's cool that it's happening at all because, you know, thanks to it, we're able to blaze through the season as fast as possible, but... Now it's beginning to feel so normal that it's beginning to feel out of order now. Like, we already have the episode I'm going to be reacting to in this video, um, episode 6 and 7. What do they think this is, the premiere all over again? I don't know what's going on, but... Treehouse, especially as a Canadian, I thank you. But that's not what we're here to talk about, so... Yeah, so... <laughs> Hello again, I guess. Um, so yeah, uh, in this video I'm going to be reacting to MLP Season 7, Episode 6, Forever Philly. Um, okay, so I think the title Forever Philly kind of suggests that this is going to be a Cutie Mark Crusaders episode. So, great! Our first Cutie Mark Crusaders episode of uh, Season 7. So, I really don't have any theories for this. Um... Yeah, I don't know what the CMC are going to be going through. Even if this is about the CMC, I mean, it could be just about, I don't know, Sweetie Belle or just Scootaloo or something. I don't know, but the title intrigues me. Like, um, I, I really wonder what's going to be happening in this episode. You know, I really don't know. I mean, again, I'm going to be going into this blind, which is a good thing. I mean, I avoided spoilers. So, yeah, so let's stop rambling around. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey, there's that pony that uh, says in season five, this dress really speaks to my soul. Oh, uh, hey, Sassy Saddles. Hey, we get to see her again. Awesome. Uh, Rarity, hold it together. I, does, I thought that, that was going to be like an all-out an all explosion. No, hey, cheer up, Rarity. No, she, she just says, I can order more! <laughs> well, come on, I mean, I mean, I mean, Rarity, Rarity's snot can't be that, can't be that dirty because, you know, she's such a clean pony. Why not just go to her, then? Why don't you go visit her? Thank you, sassy. <laughs> And the spring edition, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> You've already done almost all the work. I can handle the rest. Are you sure? But rarity, Are you yes, sure? I have everything well in hook. Are you <laughs> sure you do? <laughs> but why? Because of your color. You're the color of clay. Wow. Okay, that is impressive. It makes me wonder how he did that without magic. That was a nice little... I like that. I like how we got a little uh, recap of what the CMC do best before we break into the story. Well, that's why you got cutie marks first. Duh. Hey, there's Gabriella on the wall. Is she like a lost sister of Diamond Tiara's? I'm sorry, but I mean the tiara on her head really says it. The day I found him and took him home. But now, Blackie wants nothing to do with me. So okay, she has a unique voice. Right I like the new voice here. Oh, so sorry, dear. You're tiny. I didn't even see you there. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're tiny. I, I don't know why that sounded cruel for some reason. Like, oh, sorry, dear. You're tiny. I have responsibilities and... Oh. Go on, sweetie belle. Um, wait, is this episode about, like, you know, saying you've got something covered? Is this about, like, saying so saying that you have something covered when really you don't? I mean, I'm seeing a connection here. <laughs> what the hell? 
Hey, hey, it's a, it's the puppets guy again. It's it's a guy from um uh season four. You know this is your favorite ice cream shop. Oh, right, from when I was a little silly. And I convinced. Isn't that a good thing though? Nostalgia. To make it your all-time favorite dessert. Uh, I don't see an ice cream on the top. What is it? Huh. I remember it being much What the hell is that? Who's a good puppy? Who's a good puppy? You're the good puppy. Still, uh, I, I find this new character's voice pretty interesting. Now come on, puppy wuppy. Get the bolly wally. <laughs> Does she have to say every word with uh, E? <laughs> it would it would have been funny if um if Apple Bloom said good chicken good chicken because you know Scootaloo. Now that is impressive. <laughs> sw sw sweetie sweetie bells like kill me. Yeah, used to. <laughs> more, more similar scene track uh, transitions. Only they're right beside each other. I see Sweetie Belle and Rarity right in the background, so they're not even that far from each other. If you still think I like doing this stuff, then maybe you don't know me at all. <laughs> My sister is being unappreciative right now, and I'm going to go and give her a piece of my mind. Oh no. <laughs> oh, okay, that's just sad. Oh, the squeaker is a little smart one, you know. Huh. Oh, so this is basically a directly connected episode. Adorable little guy I found anymore. Still wonder what sa how Sassy Saddles is doing back at back in Cantalot. Into a puppy. So, what do I do? Treat him like the dog he is, and find new favorite things to do together. You think so? I know so. Rarity. Oh, Sweetie Belle, I heard what you said, and you are so right. Okay, this is actually an interesting storyline. <laughs> ah, there's Rarity with a... <laughs> okay, you'd think Sweetie Belle has a bigger smile, but... No, Rarity has a bigger one. <laughs> To start off, I really like this episode because, honestly, the moral, you know, the lesson in it was very relatable. Like, it is very true that as people grow old, their interests change. And sometimes, you know, if we don't catch up properly with that person over a long period of time, then we can really forget, you know, who they really are today. Or, you know, you know what I mean? Like... You know, we don't really have a good idea of, you know, who they really are and what their interests are today. And th this episode was a, just a really good example of that. And I like how the episode was paced. Like, I like how we have these two separate, you know, scenarios going on. You know, Rarity is just trying to show, you know, her sister a good time. And meanwhile, Apple Bloom and Scootaloo are trying to help Zipper Will, you know, kind of reconnect with her dog. And... Yeah, I, I like how we have two different scenarios, you know, with the same lesson and moral playing out within just one episode. That was very interesting to see. And I like how they kind of just collided near the end. Like, uh, Rarity is obviously hurting by the way, you know, Sweetie Belle was brutally honest with her. She's like, Rarity, you really know me? Like, we didn't even catch up properly. I mean, you could have at least talked to me about what I'm into today before we went out to hang out. But no, you didn't do that, so Sweetie Belle was brutally honest with her. And, you know, Rarity just wanted to spend some quality time with her little sister after such a long time. So, I understand that she felt crushed after, you know, hearing, you know, that tone of voice and, you know, that brutal honesty. But, you know, it was it was needed to be her. It, she needed to hear it. And she didn't realize it at first. At first she was like, uh, how dare she speak to me like that? She's being so ungrateful. Well, I'll show, I'll show her. I'll give, I'll give her a piece of my mind. 
And for a moment, I was like, geez, Rarity, I mean, you're, you don't really learn lessons very fast, do you? But, no, I mean, it didn't destroy, that didn't destroy the episode. Um, I like how, you know, uh, Rarity goes to, you know, hide in the bushes and listen to, you know, Sweetie Belle's conversation with her friends before she, you know, cuts in and gives, you know, her a piece of her mind. And, um... I like how as she's, you know, listening through the bushes, she realizes through a different scenario how she was be being to her younger sister. Like, she realized that, you know, S Sweetie Belle has grown up and she's not really into the same things as she was into before. And I, I, I like, I just really like that part of the storyline. To me, it would have felt a little predictable and a little stale if, you know, Sweetie Belle didn't, you know, show, well, didn't unintentionally show Rarity, you know, what she was doing through another scenario when she was eavesdropping, it would have felt stare to just have Sweetie Belle just in general just confronting her again, but just saying, look, you know, this is the resolution, I mean, you do have to know that I'm into different things. Just that would have felt stale, but I like how the story took a unique turn where Rarity hears um, Sweetie Belle's thoughts about the whole situation through you know, the situation that she's eavesdropping on, and not just another confrontment from Sweetie Belle. So yeah, I really like that. And it was awesome that we got to see Sassy Saddles again. Um, yeah, she was a really good character from Season 5, and yeah, I didn't really see much of a reason for her to be used much in this episode, but it was still nice to see her again. And like I mentioned during the reaction, for a moment I thought this episode's moral lesson would was, was going to be about you know, you sure you got this, or you sure you can handle this? But I think maybe they've gone over that already. I don't really remember which episode they've gone over, but, um, y you know, for a moment I thought that's what the moral of, the, of this episode was going to be. Like, you know, don't say I can't, I can do, don't say you can do work that you're not sure that you can do, because you'll end up messing everything up, and, you know, when the person who asked you to do the work comes back, everything's a mess. So I thought that was going to be what would happen in the episode because, you know, you know, it was said twice, like, Sassy Saddles, like, you know, go see your sister, I got it. When really just a few minutes ago we see her, like, stressing all over the place and rushing, so I'm like, are you sure you got this without Rarity? I mean, Rarity was obviously beginning to help you and calm down, but are you sure you got this, Sassy Saddles? And then, and then in the clubhouse, uh, Apple Bloom and Scootaloo tell Sweetie Belle, Spend time with your sister. We got this. And them, I, th I think I would be able to trust them a little more when they say they got this because, you know, they weren't really stressing out. They were just, you know, going over the list on, of, you know, how many, you know, what fillies they have to help for today. Because, you know, that's their new job. That's, that's their new responsibility. So, yeah, but, I mean, miraculously in the end, um, they also kind of need Sweetie Belle's help because... They just couldn't really figure out why the dog didn't seem like he didn't want anything to do with a zipper again. Sweetie Belle ends up showing them that, you know, what, what they didn't know all along this whole time. Like, they didn't know that the dog had grown up, and they thought all they had to do was just, you know, train it and everything, and they thought they just had to get it to simply reunite with, with Zipper, but that just wasn't the case. But, you know, um, Sweetie Belle was the one who, you know, kind of like broke the broke the mold confusion like you know she pretty much like blew it all up by you know giving this resolution and and you know it was a really satisfying ending and of course yeah yeah the actual ending is you know them getting bigger ice creams thank you i mean that was like a snicker size like ice cream like I don't understand how such, you know, hoity-toity ponies like uh, Rarity can eat food that tiny. I guess it's just the kind of food that fancy people like. But anyways, but yeah, seriously, who has ice cream that small? I mean, seriously, unless I just want a candy size. But uh, yeah, anyway, we're not talking about that. Um, but yeah, I, I did, I really liked the pacing and I really liked the direction this episode went in. And again, the lesson is very relatable. And I'm sure it's relatable to the to people who have friends and, you know, when they first became friends, they were both into the same thing. And now imagine you're still into the same thing, but your other friend over time has lost interest in that. 
Like, the episode didn't really directly say that, you know, we should still be friends if we have different interests. I mean, we don't have to stay friends. It can just be a polite, you know, we don't really have much to talk about anymore. I mean, we don't really do much, so I think it's time to go our separate ways. Not like a, I hate you, I'm leaving. No, just a polite confrontation, and you know it's time to go our separate ways. Like, the episode didn't really deliver that message directly. It was just, it was just saying in general that people's interests change as they grow up. But I was just giving an example. Like, you know, imagine if you had a friend who once had the same interests as you, but then over time he developed a different interest. You know, would you still be friends with him or not? But yeah, I really liked the episode. I liked its message. And, um, yeah, the, that uh, sculpture pony of uh, chip cutter. And uh, like I said during the reaction, how, I mean, I, I know, you know, he's got talent, but... How would he able to make a sculpture that sophisticated in, like, lightning speed? I mean, that that's some serious talent. I mean, you don't mess with that, Philly. But, I mean, wouldn't you think he would need magic to move that fast? Or maybe he's just a really fast flyer or something. <laughs> but it, it just made me question the logic for some reason. Like, I mean, he might have talent, but... That's some serious talent. I mean... I guess Celestia has blessed you or something, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, honestly, the, you know, the detail of, you know, the new fillies we were introduced to didn't really feel like the most important detail of the episode, and, you know, that's, uh, that's understandable. But, you know, again, I, I liked, I liked Zipper, like, I liked her voice, like, I like how she kind of had that, I think, European voice or something, I mean, that's what it sounds like. But I liked her voice. I mean, it was unique. It, it, it's a voice we didn't, we don't normally hear in My Little Pony. Like we're used to the you know, you know American voices, you know, the normal suburban voices. But eh, well, I mean, we're also used to you know the, all the fancy people from Canterlot and you know Rarity's accent, and you know Applejack's country accent. But this is the first time we've heard an accent like this, and I kind of enjoyed it. You know, it it shows that maybe My Little Pony is becoming more and more multicultural. And, yeah, I, I kind of like that. I still crack up in my mind in all those, you know, photo scenes with Sweetie Belle dressed up as first a sheep, then an egg, and then I think a flower or something. I like how she has that kill me face on her face. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. I mean, she's like, <sighs> she really doesn't understand that I've grown up and my interests have changed. How much of an eye opener does she need? <laughs> But still, I, I really like this episode, um, what, I wouldn't really say it's the best in the entire season, but it's a really good one, and I really don't really feel like I can really give this episode anything lower than a 10 out of 10, to be honest. I mean, I, I do think it's just as, it's just as good as, uh, Rock Solid Friendship, and I mean the same amount. Because, I mean, despite this uh, episode having no songs and, you know, <laughs> I really can't find the words. I mean, it was a good episode. I mean, the message was really good and, you know, it had its funny scenes and there's really nothing else to say. I really liked it. So, yeah, I would give this episode a 10 out of 10. I mean, the, the lesson was very realistic and relatable and... Yeah, I mean, it, it did have its really good moments, and, yeah, I mean, this this episode is just good. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. Alright, so, uh, if you, if any of you have your thoughts about this episode, as always, leave them in the comments below, or however you want to talk to me about it, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so that was my reaction to and review on MLP Season 7, Episode 6, Forever Philly. <laughs> okay, now, now that I think of the title, Forever Philly... Maybe, maybe what the title means is, you know, we're not Phillies forever. We grow up. Maybe that's what that title was. Now it makes sense. <laughs> now I know. And knowing is half the battle, kids. G.I. Joe. Okay, I'll stop. I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. If you enjoyed the contents on my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Only if you actually enjoyed the content on my channel. Not just because I asked. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video that I do, which will be my reaction to MLP Season 7 Episode, well, 7. <laughs> Two sevens.
enough of the mediocre jokes. So anyway, bro to everybody watching, and I will see you next time.